Okay, welcome here today. I'm Craig Patterson. I am going to be doing a little bit of a lecture here on communications for people that are uh, small businesses, are in the retail industry. Um, and again, my name is uh, Craig Patterson. We're going to talk about content development for retailers. Uh, we can expand well beyond that in terms of other businesses as well. Of course, it doesn't have to be just about retail, but nevertheless, uh, let's do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I'll do a little bit of an introduction of myself as well. I wanted to give you my uh, face on camera as well here. And uh, we'll get started because we're going to be getting into a talk around uh, how to build compelling marketing messaging, how to promote your business, um, and hopefully with a gear to success as well. So let's do it here. I'm just going to share my screen. Give me a few moments. Excuse me. All right, this is a content development session. We're doing this in conjunction with Retail Strategies Consultancy and uh, Zenergy Communications, which is marking 20 years. Uh, thank you so much again, everyone, for joining us here today on this uh, segment. I'm Craig Patterson. I've got a Bachelor of Commerce and Law degrees. Uh, I work with uh, various advertisers, uh, all kinds of businesses as an entrepreneur. Um, right now, actually, just before I was doing this, I was going, going over some ad copy for a client. Um, which had been submitted and uh, was less than sufficient, which is really great because it means I have some examples to use here today uh, that are fresh and new and contemporary as well. So what we're going to be doing today is going over the how-tos of content development for retail. And like I said, this doesn't have to certainly be just for retail, but uh, this will be one of the focuses that we'll be looking at here as we dive into the uh, um, uh, chat today. Now, first of all, an overview, the importance of content. Uh, really, we're developing content here, which is uh, in terms of um, something which you're trying to get out him is messaging to people, essentially. Uh, it's part of your brand's overall positioning uh, in terms of, uh, for example, there's a gentleman on the screen here who appears to have uh, a fitness company. Uh, and he's, uh, uh, again, with positioning, is he trying to position himself or his business, be it product or services, uh, for something that's health focused? Uh, you know, what is that messaging going to be there? If it's a women's dress store, it could be about a particular type of fashion. That's another example, or a shoe store. Um, with that, in terms of content, that's, again, this marketing messaging. This is going to fuel marketing itself in terms of getting the word out around uh, what is on offer from a retailer. This helps to build what we call brand recognition. This is where people remember the brand. They're going to know what your brand is or who you are or whatever is being uh, sold or marketed and good content can help grow your audience as well. Now, audience is important because this is really curating your consumer base, uh, whether or not they're virtual, whether or not they're in your local community, it could be global. You never know if it's going to be something where you've got a business that you can sell well beyond just something within your local community as well. Do a bit of a poll here to get this working. How often do you engage? Now, this is a question for people in the audience. How often do you engage with your audience online? I'll give a little bit of a uh, moment here to uh, answer that. If you want to answer that right within the poll here on the screen. Give you a moment here. We're going to end the poll. Got a few different results here, but... Uh, Let's see, we've got, I mean, we've got the options, of course, are daily, weekly, monthly, or annually. Um, those that answer daily, that's terrific. I mean, not everyone's going to have to uh, uh, necessarily, you know, reach out to your uh, people, say, by email daily. I actually just unsubscribed to a, a store that uh, was sending me daily emails. It was just because I wasn't shopping there anymore, unfortunately. But nevertheless, uh, creating a consistent and uh, um, ongoing uh, communication can at least remind people that your business or yourself exist. <laughs> uh, weekly could be sufficient for some, uh, but monthly and annually probably is a little bit uh, too long. So um, daily could be the right answer, or at least very regularly. Back into the discussion specifically of the communications, how the messaging works and uh, how to go about creating this. Let's talk about these 10 easy steps I'm going to go through each of these in detail. So I'm going to go over these just as an overview here, and then we'll discuss each one of them in separate slides. Um, these 10 easy steps as we set them out is number one, define what you're trying to achieve. Uh, why are you trying to communicate with uh, people, basically? Um, establish some goals, which means why are you doing it? And uh, 
you know, what do you hope to get out of it? Uh, establishing what we might call benchmarks, which means do we want to get past that benchmark or that goalpost or whatever we want to call it? There's some terminology in marketing. I'm actually trying to simplify things a little bit when I myself communicate here, but we all have different uh, lingo and terminology that sometimes we end up using and, and don't even realize it. And that is actually, I guess, a lesson for uh, communicating and marketing as well, even with what I'm doing here. Uh, step number three we've got here is develop a strategy and tactics for messaging. Uh, I'll go into that more rather than just explaining that here, but uh, you look for your best distribution channels based on the strategy. So that could be email, social media, uh, TV, newspaper, there's all kinds of different things. I'll get into that again, like I said. Um, with that, you want to uh, identify your target audience. Are you looking for to get you know people that are interested in fitness? Are you looking for pet owners? Uh, in the case of the advertisement I was just reviewing, it was for a, a multimedia film studio. I can explain a bit more than that as I get into examples here because I saw some glaring things I would change within that copy. I'm not bashing it or anything. Of course, I just saw room for improvement. Uh, always take a positive bent to these things as well. I think uh, that's really important. We're all learning still. Um, but identify that target audience. Who do you want to speak to? Uh, create that actual content. In this case, I'm doing some edits, but we're talking about creating content here. Um, in terms of actually getting out there and just making it, uh, that can be social media posts, it can be articles. Again, I'll get into that a bit more. Establishing a budget, uh, how, what kind of resources are you able to dedicate to this? That can include such things as money and people and time, I guess, which uh, time is money, mapping out timelines, which is uh, speaking of which, so how much time is it going to take? Uh, we talk about that, including being realistic, basically. It's not going to happen in 20 minutes. Uh, it might take at least 20 days. And uh, but nevertheless, uh, develop an action plan. How are you going to go about getting this message out or these messages out to uh, those people that you want to be communicating with, being that target market, as we would call it, and implementing and tracking your results and even looking at ways to improve, perhaps either within the current uh, marketing messaging campaign, if we want to call it that, or uh, for future campaigns as well, future efforts to communicate and get in front of people and get them interested in uh, your business or whatever you're offering. Let's get into each step here. Step number one, define what you're trying to achieve uh, in terms of these communications. Now, you might be concerned with one or more of the following, uh, becoming better known uh, or just even known in your community. Perhaps you've got a new business that's come out or you've moved into a new community or have expanded. Um, getting people to know who you are. I mean, that's uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, educating the public about your offerings, uh, which is, I think, really, really important, uh, certainly in terms of what do you have on offer? Uh, do you have lots of pet goods that are available? Are you offering personal training services? Uh, do you have a large film studio in a big city that you want people to be uh, utilizing? And, and this is basically business development. These are all uh, different uh, things. And by educating people, and getting them to know, I mean, you, you can become what we call a thought leader, uh, or at least if you know something more than someone else, uh, teaching that really is something which can become uh, quite profound in terms of building trust for consumers. Get into that a little bit more, I think, in the future here as well. But, um, you know, other options, other uh, reasons for communicating here could be recruiting. Uh, and by that, I mean, trying to find, say, staff for your store or for your business or someone to do social media. Um, in terms of, say, retail uh, businesses uh, specifically, well, sometimes it's really hard to find good staff. This is something we've heard across uh, North America, basically. In uh, quite a few markets now, we're seeing there are more retail jobs than there are people to fill them, and this has created certainly a challenge. Um, again, with uh, communication efforts, you might be announcing promotions or events. This could be something like a sale in your store, if you have a store, or there could be some sort of an event that's being held, whatever that might be. Uh, and even celebrating milestones like Zenergy Communications that helps set this up as 20 years. Uh, that could be an example of something which would be a great campaign for uh, marketing. Um, whether or not that's getting into the local newspaper, that can always be a little more difficult than uh, expected. I'll get into that more, but uh, also something along the lines of, say, paid advertising content, which in theory should guarantee that marketing message to get out. But there's an investment. I'll talk about a bit that. I'll talk a bit more about that as we continue here. Um, and other things, again, like I'd actually said before, in terms of promotions, announcing a sale in your store. That's a quite a specific example, uh, but something that we see a lot of advertising for, and there's all kinds of ways to do it, whether or not that's digital or online or through social media or even through a paper flyer. And I am getting ahead of myself because I do discuss that in future slides. So let's get into that. 
Now, step two here we've got for communicating your marketing message is to establish goals to help you get there. You got to ask yourself, what are your specific targets? Uh, do you want to, uh, you know, go after social media, online, um, search engine optimization in terms of working with keywords, which will get that message onto hopefully the front page of Google and will get in front of uh, people that are going to be interested. Um, sometimes you can pay for certain words that can get really expensive. There's a whole nother course or a whole nother lecture on that that I'm not going to get into because it's its own beast. But uh, uh, again, you know, who are you targeting with your message? Uh, who do you want to engage with? Uh, is it going to be, say, senior citizens or pet owners or parents of children? If you've got kids clothing, say, or toys, for example, um, is it people that are looking to get fit? If you've got, say, a fitness company, whether or not you've got fitness products or you're offering personal training, training services, I could just obviously go on, but uh, who do you want to engage with? Uh, what message do you want to convey? Are you trying to uh, say something positive, negative, uh, or no, I shouldn't say negative, but certainly say building a scare tactic. I'll build a little, I'll get into that a bit more in terms of what's effective marketing messaging that might work for your target group that you're trying to speak to. And how will you measure your success? Uh, is success increased sales or is success in terms of what you were trying to get out of the communicating? Are you trying to get more people say, to follow your social media? Uh, do you want more followers on LinkedIn? Uh, are you looking to grow your email list? Uh, an email list could be used to market to people. You send out emails. I'll get into this a bit with future slides, but uh, um, all kinds of different ways in terms of measuring your success or what some might call a return on investment, which I'll be getting into here as well. Step number three, develop strategy and tactics for messaging. Very important. I guess all these steps are important. Um, how are you going to connect with media and other channels to get the message out? Part of the strategy. Uh, media could include news media. Uh, that's sometimes easier said than done in terms of, say, pitching to a newspaper, a story about something for your business. Uh, in smaller communities, that can happen. And by the way, pitching to a business means that you're coming to, say, an editor or someone within a newspaper and saying, I have a story to tell. Would you like to tell it? Basically, that's what that is. It's another keyword or another lingo term that I'm using that we have to remember. Not everyone might know. Um, again, with uh, media and other channels to get your message out, that could be, again, social media, um, anything in terms of uh, platforms. Um, you want to have a unified strategy for messaging. I think that's very important. Uh, you don't want to deviate too much in terms of uh, if you've got, say, a fitness company, um, you don't, I don't know, you want, don't want to be talking about pets all of a sudden, or you don't want to have, uh, say, really formal language in, in one communication and then something that's very, very uh, casual in another. Um, really, you, you want your branding, if you have a logo, to be consistent. I think that's hopefully intuitive, as well as uh, overall messaging around, say, again, if you've got protein powder to sell. Uh, keeping that consistent, hopefully, and saying this is a good product and whatnot. Uh, now, educating your uh, customers using consistent language, um, again, be that terminology or just really simple language. Um, if you can speak to them in a succinct and comprehensive manner, I think that's important. Um, I can use a, a real world example. I, I had a, a client submit uh, an advertorial to us this morning, and the, the first sentence was about uh, the jurisdiction that it was in seeing lots of new businesses of its type. This is like the big film studio type of, well, they can do commercials and, and video stuff. It's it's kind of a multimedia center. But um, my immediate thought was, uh, in terms of, you know, being succinct, I thought you've already lost the reader. You're talking about uh, this this state. You're not talking about uh, uh, being in the United States. You're, you're not talking about specifically the product. So um, keeping this actually succinct and to the point and also um, leading with the lead, I think is really, really important. There's all kinds of strategies there. Sometimes you might want to um, utilize either a consultant or even just run something by a friend and say, what's impactful in terms of messaging? Consultants cost money. So sometimes running it by a friend is just better. Um, we got to keep in mind that people may have a lower budget and that's totally, totally acceptable. We're talking uh, here specifically with a lot of small businesses. And I know that resources can be tight compared to, you know, Walmart or something like that, where they've got all kinds of money to do all kinds of things in terms of marketing. So, uh, but small businesses still have a lot of advantages, I think, especially as people embrace them uh, after the pandemic here. How are you going to get the target audience interested in what you're trying to say? Uh, well, there's lots of strategies there as well. This is, again, part of the tactics. We're going to get into that more specifically here. Step four, the best distribution channels for your marketing messaging based on the strategy that you're developing here. Now, do you want to send this out? Uh, and you can do this by, uh, well, 
it says we have a note here, think integrated and not siloed. You can do all of these, or you can do most of these, or you can do some of these. There, there's no right answer to this here, but it is good to get the message out in different ways and maybe across different channels so that you can get to people. Uh, maybe not just in one area, you might not get a hold of someone by email. So uh, the first example we've got here is newsletter. Um, what that can mean is you can basically send out what we call an email blast or e-blast, uh, which is an email that you send to people who have agreed to subscribe to uh, your email list for your business. Now, um, ideally, people should, and please do ensure that people have opted in and agreed to be receiving these communications. I think that's quite important. You don't want people to be receiving emails and saying, oh, I don't want to get these. They could mark it as spam. They could report it as spam. That could actually affect the ability to send emails in the future, potentially. So you want to be careful with that. But it's always good to have people that you actually want to, that want to be your customers uh, and won't be annoyed. Uh, again, that should hopefully be intuitive. So that's a newsletter. Um, social media posts can be anything, say, Instagram. You can do Instagram stories. You can do posts. If you've got a certain type of business that might be appropriate to be even advertising on LinkedIn. Be careful with that being a professional network, but nevertheless, there's a strategy there. Facebook attracts a certain demographic. Twitter is still around for now. TikTok, we'll see how that goes, but uh, certainly there's uh, social media out there, which uh, is very, very useful in terms of getting the messaging out for marketing campaigns. We've got handouts here. I mean, handouts could be, they're still using flyers. I think you can still get flyers in your mailbox sometimes. I don't get that as much as I used to in the past, but perhaps that's just isolated to myself. But I do know generally in the industry, being someone that does work in the uh, marketing industry, that uh, paper flyers are still quite important for certain businesses. Uh, certain drug stores and grocery stores still utilize them in certain parts of the country, but uh, it's a little bit less and less as we've seen more things going digital, whether or not you can get that on your phone or your computer. But uh, handouts could even include, for example, I don't know, there's a parade in your local community and you hand out flyers or you staple uh, a flyer to the local you know, telephone poles. I mean, I guess those are all handouts. Um, the next thing here is SMS, or for those that don't know what that is, I learned what that was a few years ago. I feel dumb that I didn't know at first, but it was text messaging is another way to put it. Uh, um, there are actually companies out there or even just individual retailers that uh, uh, will send texts, text messages to their target market. Now, obviously, you have to have the phone number of that uh, cell phone number, I guess you'd say, of that uh, target person. And of course, you want their permission. They have to you know, have opted in in terms of saying, yes, we would like to receive these text messages. Because again, you don't want to be annoying people with text messages that they don't want. That's not going to help your business at all. And could even hurt things that people complain or there's some bad word of mouth. I don't know. I mean, it's always good to have people that actually want to uh, shop at your business or frequent it or whatever, you know, the goal is around how the business operates. Um, other distribution channels could be website. Uh, some websites are utilized just to build brand awareness uh, in terms of saying this is who we are. Uh, a website could be uh, something which would educate people. Uh, I've seen this certainly quite a bit and saying that, uh, uh, you know, this is a way that we can build a brand or build our business, get people to know who we are by telling them different things. And say, for example, with say a fitness website, you could have something about what are the greatest workouts, what are the greatest products. Uh, and websites, of course, too, can have an online shopping channel or e-commerce, as we might call it. And uh, again, getting traffic to that website to get consumers to shop in that e-commerce or online store is important. Again, there's a whole nother uh, tangent to this uh, lecture that I'm giving around search engine optimization in terms of say keywords or just getting people onto the website. It's hard because there's all kinds of websites out there trying to sell stuff. So getting ahead of the other ones can be a bit of a challenge and it can get expensive as well if you want to you know buy keyword advertising and again i'm not the expert in this there are people that do this as a business uh people can learn it themselves but sometimes you know you need a little bit of help so i know there are community programs out there and uh, there's some one-on-one -on -one lecturing i believe as part of this program as well so we'll talk about it at the end um and even an article now in terms of distribution channels an article that could include such things as a newspaper article um, which we call earned media. Uh, what that means is you're not paying for it, essentially. Uh, so that could be something like, uh, you know, local uh, store celebrates 20 years in business selling pet goods to the local community. A new local newspaper might run a story like that. It's not always guaranteed that a newspaper is going to pick up a story. So um, that can be definitely frustrating for small businesses. So in terms of article, there's also something called advertorial, where you may say buy a newspaper article or a news article or an article anywhere, I suppose, for that matter, in a magazine. And um, advertorial means basically that it's like an editorial or an article, but you're paying to have it in there. We see that quite a bit in local newspapers now. I saw one... Uh, 
um, about a local drugstore that had an anniversary. It was something like 65 years. I think it was the grandson running it. And they purchased basically an advertorial. Well, they did. They purchased an advertorial in a local newspaper. But this way, they were able to control their message completely. They wrote it. It said exactly what they wanted to say. It didn't have a journalist coming in and I don't know, saying something, maybe not disparaging, but saying, you know, local competition has been quite strong, blah, blah, blah. There's lots of, you know, it, it really just focuses on the business itself. So sometimes as part of your marketing messaging, getting into the local newspaper, but paying for it might be a good strategy. It can be expensive. It's not always ideal and it's pretty rare. It's not super common to see this, but it does happen. Certainly nothing wrong with it as well. Um, I'm assuming businesses are seeing success with it because it's being done. And as I mentioned before, with my uh, note here about being integrated and not siloed, what that means is you can use these together. You can use them in conjunction. Um, strategy is there in terms of uh, you may want to reach people in different ways. Uh, another note here we've got is create a template to ensure consistency for quick turnaround for future content. So um, in terms of, say, you want to continue to communicate with the target group that you want to get your message out to. You might want to do this repeatedly. Um, in fact, that's encouraged. We had that poll earlier saying communicate with your target market almost daily or at least regularly. Um, in the future, if you do more of these marketing campaigns or communication strategies, they're going to get easier and faster. The first one might take quite a bit of time. You know, you'll be learning, hopefully not stumbling too much, but uh, eventually you become a pro in what you're doing. There's all kinds of business owners out around the country and around the world doing this. So, uh, just take a bit of work and time, but uh, as do all things with business, right? That's that's why we're here. Step number five here is identify your target audiences. Who do you want to speak to? Who's your customer? Why are you doing this? Who are you trying to reach? Knowing your audience makes it possible to plan your communications logically. Um, you want to know what you need to establish to say, you know, who, who are my recipients? Are they people that own pets? Do they own cats or dogs? Uh, are they people going to the gym? Are they uh, people that might utilize uh, film studio technology? They're in the film industry. They're filming commercials. Uh, there's all kinds of different things here. Uh, who are you trying to get in front of? Um, and we got a note here as well. Consider the audience. So you do you want to talk to them directly or subtly? And uh, there are different strategies here. So uh, one example is saying, uh, um, I'm going to use the example of, say, a law firm. I've used this example before. A uh, direct example would be, uh, we're Jones and Jones Law Firm, we're the best at car accidents, uh, have you been hurt, call us now. That's a pretty direct ad. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've all seen them, whether or not it's a billboard on the highway or uh, uh, online or on your phone. Uh, a subtle advertisement, I've got an interesting example of that. I'm, I grew up in a smaller community where a local law firm, I'll use that again as an example, would do a weekly newspaper article. This was a sponsored advertorial piece, but uh, how it was positioned was they would talk about a different set of case law each week and say, basically, you know, uh, Joe divorced Jane, uh, you know, Jane asked for the house and the kids, that sort of thing. Um, and so at the end of the story, they would say, this is how the judge found the case or the decision. Well, that was sponsored by this law firm. They can say, you know, I forget the name of the law firm right now. It's just, it's been a few years, but uh, the law firm uh, actually found quite a bit of business from this because it became a household name. Apparently it's not enough of a household name that I remember after 20 years, but um, actually it was Mc McMillan and Matt McMaster, I think it was. I do remember. So it, this is something which actually is, <laughs> Actually, apparently it worked. I now remember the name because it had a logo as well. And that's actually something to think about, too, is having a bit of an iconic logo. For some reason, the font was just something that reminded me of the business as well, because I saw it in writing in the newspaper. And uh, I remembered how it looked as well as the fact that they did this messaging. And the subtle messaging uh, created a situation where we saw this law firm as a thought leader and also had a bit of a sense of humor because of the way that they were writing these things here. They kept it professional, but they still had some funny stuff in there, too. So uh, that is a fine balance. Uh, Humor can be a tricky one when you're trying to market. I can tell you that you don't want to go wrong because of, you know, cancel culture, which potentially still exists. I don't think it's potentially. <clears throat> Step number six, you want to create your actual content. This is where things get fun. Not that the others, the other steps aren't, but uh, you got to say, what's the purpose of the content? Are you uh, putting out, say, new merchandise in your store? Um, is it a particular promotion? Um, it could be a sale again in terms of promotion. Are you looking to increase your website visits? Uh, that could also go for, I think, social media as well. Uh, increase overall awareness uh, of the business or uh, promoting an in-store event. We're having a cocktail party and we're going to be selling handbags or shoes. Uh, certainly retailers have done this and actually found great success. 
Uh, you look at the mood, language, and design of your messaging. Um, craft the message with your audience in mind. Um, and again, if you're talking to a group of uh, doctors or lawyers, you're going to use, I think, a different message than you are to uh, someone that's got a uh, local, you know, a local person that's got a pet. Um, so again, uh, the mood and style of the language will affect how people react to it. Is it uh, formal or informal? So again, uh, uh, I'm putting together a medical journal for doctors, which is going to include a discussion of these medications. I'm not an expert here, so I'm not able to talk about that in a real great way, but uh, or at least get into it. Not that I have to here, but um, are you speaking formally or informally? Uh, in the case of, say, a pet owner, you might have an advertisement that might be a bit more informal saying, you know, um, you know, your dog is sad, make him happy with this treat. <laughs> um, and the messaging could be simple or complex. And again, that goes to the, you know, if you're marketing to lawyers or a law firm or doctors, you can probably be a little bit more complex in the language and messaging that you're using uh, versus something which would be quite simple for a pet owner. Like we have a great new set of dog treats and uh, um, puppy jackets. I don't have a dog, so I don't know what people buy, but <laughs> uh, the design of your content, uh, again, it really depends on who you're trying to talk to. Um, you know, something that could be clean and minimalist, uh, bright and colorful, that might get a little bit more attention, depends, it could work, uh, or even modern, are you attracting an urban demographic, are you looking for these young, sophisticated people that are uh, uh, moving into the inner cities, that happens in some parts of the United States, not that many, unfortunately, but there's a revival. Step number seven, establish a budget, what do you have to, uh, uh, what resources do you have to actually make this campaign a success? Uh, this could be money, of course, you can uh, be putting money into this, you could be hiring people to help, you could be uh, buying Google uh, keywords. Also, do you have the people to make it possible? Say you've got a store where it's you and you've got one sales employee. Uh, do you want that sales employee to be working on this marketing messaging, doing social media, uh, creating a campaign, or do you want them on the sales floor selling? Because that's really, really important as well. A store can lose sales that they don't have with someone on a sales floor. So this is an example of uh, what resources do you have available? The term for that some may use is what's called opportunity cost, which means uh, are you going to be losing an opportunity to make money by having someone do something else versus, say, working on this marketing campaign or this advertising or communications? But uh, again, very important things to consider. And that's all part of this budget. What can I? What can you afford to do as you're trying to communicate? I think it is important to uh, invest into uh, uh, communicating what you have. It's a bit of a, you know, you have to spend money to make money situation, but we know that a lot of businesses are stretched right now. So that's perfectly fine. We understand um, what other resources are out there. It just might mean a few more longer hours or many, hopefully not too many longer hours out there. I know people are tired, but, uh, you know, getting that message out and trying hard is important, I think, to make a business a success. And we've certainly seen some businesses not succeed for the fact that, uh, you know, some business owners may not quite be driven enough. So it's, always good to be trying hard if you want your business to be a success. Um, determine your financial and human resources. Uh, again, like I said, around opportunity costs, uh, can you afford to spend them on communications? Have you got the money? Have you got the people power? Have you got both? Step eight, map out the timelines. This is an important one, of course, because you want to be realistic how long it's going to take to prepare this in terms of communications messaging and to implement this campaign, as we will call it. Um, you have to be realistic. It's probably not going to happen in a day, especially if this is your first time. It's going to take some time. So put time aside for some initial strategic planning. Um, basically, what we've been going through with these slides here, uh, you know, prepare materials after creating this plan. Um, how long is it going to take to do that? Um, how long is it going to take to start spreading the word by distributing the message? Again, um, we call this forecasting or, or or setting, I guess, a benchmark of time, but I think we'll use the term forecasting. How long is, is it going to take a week for me to get this message out? How long, how long will it take me to prepare this? Um, how long will we run this, say, ad in the newspaper? Um, if we're running a um, campaign to get subscribers, say, on a, for a newsletter, and we're doing this through, I don't know, LinkedIn and Instagram, how long are we going to run this for? Will it be two weeks? Will it be one week? Will it be a weekend? Um, maybe a week is a good sweet spot. It really depends what you're looking for. It could be a month. Um, you start spreading the word by distributing the message uh, that can be across multiple channels, again, be it social media like Instagram or Facebook, or through the email or through the newspaper advertisement, and uh, allocate some time, you know, check in and just see how things are going with this. Uh, hopefully things have not gone sideways. Hopefully people are paying attention to what you're doing in terms of that messaging and uh, evaluate uh, because you can probably, well, in many cases, anyways, tweak things as you're working through this marketing message during this 
campaign time, as we'll call it, uh, or you'll want to evaluate what you're doing safe. If you want to uh, continue doing this in the future, things will get easier, but also you can come up with better strategies and uh, be able to do this better next time, perhaps. So um, one thing to keep in mind is uh, we're not failing when we're doing this, we're just learning. So if things don't quite work out the way you want, hopefully you can pivot and try to redeem things at the time that uh, this campaign is happening. Or if you do end it uh, at that point in terms of the campaign, uh, getting started on another one, don't quit. Uh, or, you know, evaluate, uh, see what you can do better, and then uh, look to relaunch this uh, in due course, certainly not right away in terms of uh, make sure you've got all ducks in a row before you're moving on if there's been any uh, challenges or any uh, situations where there's been a bit of a lack of success initially with the messaging. And the timelines, of course, are going to depend on the activities and goals. So uh, again, you know, how long is it going to be for strategy? So, so it's going to take longer the first time, it's going to get easier as you go on, keep doing it. And it's just going to be a much better process as we move forward, hopefully. I would say not even just hopefully. But develop an action plan. You create a step-by-step -step plan that outlines who's responsible for what actions and corresponding deadlines. Um, hopefully things are mostly complete at that point. Uh, you may have some staff that are helping out with certain things, but uh, uh, just making sure that things are organized to ensure that the social media is actually getting done, that the email is getting sent out, and that the copy is going into the local newspaper in terms of the article, which is going to say go into that uh, newspaper online or in paper. You want to, in terms of the action plan, compose and design your message um, or different messages if you're using multiple channels while keeping things you know, consistent, as we were talking in a few slides before. But uh, making contact with people who can help you and getting everything in place to start your communication effort. Again, all part of the action plan. There may be people out there that can help you, even family and friends, uh, perhaps employees that you have, uh, consultants that you hire, or there might be people in local community or even consultancies that will work for free in terms of uh, they may be part of some government programs. There are programs out there that are out there to help small businesses, depending where you live and what's going on. So I've seen this throughout North America. Um, and evaluate your efforts so that you can continue to improve. And like I said before, uh, that could be improvement within the existing situation where you're marketing or doing this campaign or in future ones as well, if you're doing uh, this moving forward as well, which hopefully is the case. Again, keep your marketing messaging consistent and ongoing. Uh, it'll get people to know who you are and what your business is. And uh, that's going to be very, very important. Step number 10, you want to implement and track and evaluate your results. So start doing it, see how it's going. If you evaluate your communication plan in terms of how well you carry it out and how it works, you'll be able to make changes uh, in order to improve it. Again, whether or not it's in the current uh, campaign time period or if it's in the future, um, it's going to keep getting more effective each time you implement it. So good to keep doing it. Uh, it's going to get easier and easier. Like I said, uh, you keep up the effort. You can adjust the plan if needed uh, while engaging with the community. Uh, you know, what's working? Uh, are people contacting you? Uh, are you getting engagement on social media? What can be done better? Saying, well, geez, hmm, could have reached out to this group. I could have used more simpler language. Uh, I could have used a brighter font. I could have done something different. And so what are the learnings? Uh, take those down, take a positive spin, try to take a positive overall opinion, uh, overall ethos, I'd say, when doing this. Uh, you want to be having fun while you're doing business, while working hard as well. So implement and track your results. Uh, come back to things you know, see what can work for the future. Keep doing it and, and don't get disturbed. Get discouraged. I cannot talk today. <laughs> Another question here that we've got. I have to go back. My apologies. Which of the following is a key component of effective content that is savable and shareable? Informative, aesthetically pleasing, interactive, or all of the above? Let's have people ask this, answer this question. What do you think? Give people a moment. All right, all the above. Geez, everybody's answered all the above. That's awesome. Okay. We should... Yes, absolutely. Answers all the above. We want content that's going to be savable and shareable. People will share stuff sometimes. They'll uh, tell things to their friends. I've, I've shared some advertisement with friends, especially some really great restaurants when they have some good visuals. Holy cow. I've said, we've got to go here and eat. That's a good example of something. Um, again, key component for effective content. Is it informative? Well, absolutely. That restaurant... Uh, uh, ad that I saw on Instagram that looked like it was delicious was telling me what they had available and I went and tried it uh, aesthetically pleasing well it looked good 
it got my attention. It also got me hungry. Uh, it ruined my diet. And then interactive. Well, you've got comment a comment section there. Uh, people may say this is the greatest food ever. Monitor that. Some people may come in and make disparaging comments. Hopefully not. But I've seen that even in advertisements as well. Unfortunately, with my local grocery store, I made that type of comment on one of their posts, which I don't feel good about. But they also needed some uh, reinforced feedback about how they weren't doing a good job. But nevertheless... <laughs> Uh, interactive is not a bad thing because you may get opinions of people say in a comment section of social media this is just one example which could actually be useful I've seen this before I've got a news publication that I own and we've received some comments from people even in a comment section and I realized oh oh I hadn't thought about that we should do this we should report on this you know we should have thought about that um, having something interactive allows you to to you know, get to know what people are thinking. And also face-to-face uh, -face interaction can be different than online. In fact, quite often it is. So uh, um, seeing your customer face-to-face -face can sometimes be invaluable in terms of getting to uh, know who they are. There was that question. And we should ask if there's any questions here in the audience as well. Uh, feel free to raise your hand if you've got anything that uh, uh, you'd like to know here today. Uh, and otherwise we'll get to the next slide. We don't have any questions here today. So I want to say thank you so much. Again, I'm Craig Patterson. I'm the uh, founder of Retail Insider Media. I uh, give a lecture here today. Uh, we've got a next session coming up here on April 12th at 1030. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over to Linda, and I'm going to say thank you to Retail uh, Strategies as well as Energy Communication here. Uh, so Linda, would you like to take over and talk a little bit about what's coming up next? Sure. Thank you so much, Craig. That was excellent certainly touched some of the elements. And of course, if we had more time, we can go into much more details, but certainly half an hour, we actually surpassed the time. So we thank you very much for being here uh, and staying on for a couple of extra minutes. So what we're gonna be doing is on the 12th of April, we will have the social media content development. So we're gonna dive deeper on social media content uh, on that date, same time, 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central. Um, and what I was going to also mention is that you're going to get a copy of this presentation along with the deck and uh, the recording and a handout. And that handout is going to be very helpful to you if you want to book a one on one. Uh, at that point, with the handout, we would go through it, we'd book a time with you and go through it so that we can actually dive deep into your specific needs to help you develop your content specific to your application. So uh, take advantage of that. It's an excellent thing to do. And um, I think it's, uh, it helps supplement to what Craig has presented here, because of course we don't know all the details about your business. So um, I, would, uh, I would suggest that you take advantage of it. So thanks once again, Craig, and we will see you on the 12th of April. Um, have a lovely day and thank you once again for being here. Bye-bye now. Thank you.